you want to know about your beauty, huh? Hey everybody, so today's episode will be on the iconic Australian band You Beauty, uh, who consists of Will Farrier, Flynn McKinnery, Josh Vua, and Kino Verzosa. Um, and actually, I, I was lucky enough to get the chance to talk to Kino Verzosa about the making of this record, uh, Jersey Flag. And so we're going to start the episode off with that. Um, it was a very fun and nostalgic conversation. Hope you enjoy. Here we go. How you doing, bud? Yeah, I'm good. How's it going? I'm just at work, just at the cafe. Oh, cool. Okay. You're backlit by a milk fridge. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> so, I, I might start by asking about Absolute Boys. Um, so, yeah, like, how did that band start, I guess? And then, and how did that kind of transition into you, Beauty? Because I know, like, you and Will in both those bands together. Um, yeah. So, um... I moved to Melbourne and then I started jamming with Dennis. So Dennis um, played in the band, the screamo band from Sydney called Eucalypt with um, Lawrence. You know Royal Headache? Oh, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So he played it. They played in a screamo band together. Um, and we played with them. Me and Will, we played in a band called Ohana when we all lived in Wollongong. Yeah. So we played like DIY shows. So I was friends with Dennis and when I moved to Melbourne, I started jamming with him. So me and um, Dennis was jam- were jamming together and then that was just like drums and guitar. And then Will moved to Melbourne, I forget how long after that, from Wollongong also, maybe a year yeah. or maybe less. And then he played, Will played guitar previously, so he started playing bass in Absolute Boys. Um, and we are into like post-punk, like My Disco, we were big fans of My Disco and yeah. friends of those guys. Um, so yeah, we moved down there, um, started that and then subsequently like recorded like a 12 inch single and then an album, but we broke up as soon as we released the album. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that, <laughs> that's really important. Yeah. It's just like things just came to a bit of a head with, um, just things came to a bit of a head, I guess. Yeah. Fair enough. And I'm fortunately, yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen Dennis since, but I hope he's doing well. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> well, he's a, he's a great, uh, really uh, interesting and unique guitar player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah big time. Like, yeah, super sweet guy. And, yeah. Um, yeah, like that, 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 was, that was a really cool little stint. And then from there, I moved back up to Sydney. Yeah. Um, we was continuing living in Melbourne. And when I moved back, the band I mentioned before, Ohana, I, me... Will, there's this other guy called Flynn, um, who plays bass in New Beauty. Yeah. Um, we played in the band previously, so I moved up and I moved in with Flynn, and he had a drum kit in the spare room, and I was, like, um, in America. Yeah. So I, I moved up to Sydney, I was living there, and then we just started jamming, and um, he's Josh, who plays guitar in New Beauty, um, good friend of Flynn's, and, like, we played in bands together, like, previously, when, when we were in Ohio. Yeah. Um, we started jamming as a three-piece. Um, Josh played guitar and then Flynn hopped on bass this time mm. instead of guitar because he played guitar in Ohana. So, um, yeah, did that. We were jamming for ages and we come up with a bunch of songs and we just wanted to play, like, I suppose everyone had their style, you know, like, I like the drum, how I like the drum. Yeah. Josh liked guitar, how he likes to play his guitar and, like, Flynn was kind of playing a bass like a guitar. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely, like, really melodic, yeah. It's got yeah. that like melodic post punk uh, bass thing happening. Who who yeah. were like some of your influences in terms of your drumming? Because like you you have quite a like an interesting unique style. I feel like where it's like kind of minimal, but then you'll you'll chuck in some like irregular like time signatures and or it can be quite syncopated. Um, yeah. Like, do you have like any like um, specific influences? You mentioned my disco before. Yeah. Well, I grew up like um, listening to kind of like like hardcore, post-hardcore kind of mathy stuff. Yeah, cool. Um, so that's always, just for interest sake, I always like um, coming up with kind of interesting rhythms, but I also like to strip it back. Yeah. So I suppose that's just some leftover habits from playing kind of more mathy kind of hardcore stuff. Yeah, sweet. Um, so that, yeah, that just keeps things interesting for me. And then I wanted to play more straight down the line rock stuff. Yeah. Um, 
just so I wasn't having to concentrate so hard and just be <laughs> So I just wanted to sit in the pocket, really. So I just wanted to play a lot of closed hi-hat stuff. Yeah. And I went a double time on the um, hi-hats just for pace and just to give it a bit of energy. Yeah. And other than that, play it basically four to the floor. Yeah. Um, um, there was a drummer that I really liked from Wollongong. His name's Adam Rogan. He played in this band called High Test. Cool. Um, he goes under the Catman. Um, he plays in a bunch of different things. And they played kind of Ramones esque, kind of like stoner rock. And he played like, um, yeah, just like closed, fast height Ramones kind of stuff. Yeah. I really think. Um, so, yeah, I, I suppose that was the um, catalyst of that style of drumming. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, I just wanted to sit back and take it all in and just like, yeah. Play pretty fine. And also, like, Anything cliched in regards to rock, like drum beats, I just wanted to rip st- stuff off and stuff that felt good and fun to play. I yeah. Guess. Yeah, well, yeah. the whole album, or Jersey Flag, which is the album that we talked about for our episode, yeah, it's fully, it's really in the pocket. Like, everyone is playing so well together. And, like, you can really tell that you guys play together a lot. Now, yeah. like, when... So I read an interview where Will says that... um like all the instrumentals were recorded and then like he just came and like did his lyrics on top of it. Did you know that it was going to be some sort of concept album or like what was the communication no, there? Uh, you Beauty was instrumentally done for about over a year and we just, we wrote a bunch of songs and none of us could sing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we were like, oh, Will was living in the state the whole time. So we're like, oh, maybe like, we've got this, we could just record it and then, we didn't know who else. We didn't want to sing. We couldn't do it. So we just got Will in to sing over the top. Um, and because he had a whole album's worth of songs to do lyrics to, he thought a concept album would be the easiest way to knock out a bunch of songs. Yeah. Rather than coming up with, like, fresh material. So he just created a fictional character, like a um, retired football star from the 90s and just wrote, like, a story to cover so many songs. That so was, like... Practically speaking, like he's got an English degree and stuff like that. Right. Um, so, yeah, practically it just was easy to have a concept album to um, knock out so many songs. Yeah. And like we jammed every week just for fun, for shoots mm. and giggles. Sometimes like we were living together so we could jam like often more than that. Um, and we will just needed to do get lyrics for a bunch of songs so yeah that's how the concept thing come up so will was an afterthought funnily enough yeah that's so funny <laughs> even though like the concept and everything that he brought to the band he wasn't involved in the hours really yeah it's so in making yeah it's he was. don't get me wrong and he's the most pivotal part of it all but initially it was like you know one to two years of us just jamming instrumentally yeah and then we get and then he just kind of winged it over the top and um yeah yeah it's cool because like um often when you talk about music or you think about music it's like how does the music reflect the lyrics or a lot of people are trying to make the instrumental like bring out the emotion of a particular song but it's so cool like where the instrumental's already done and then he's like he has to like match what you guys are doing in terms of like the different moods and everything so that's one kind of, it's almost like a bit of a magic trick where like, like, it's so cool how like you guys created these like different moods and these different styles of songs that just so happen to work really well narratively um, in the context of that album. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of crazy to think about it like that. And it's, um, some of the structures, he was confined by that because we had pretty solid the songs were like pretty much fully written. Yeah, yeah. So there wasn't much, a lot of lee room for extend, for extend. We extended some verses and choruses, etc., mm-hmm. and looped some things over to suit. But his delivery was limited by the structures that we had come up with. Yeah, it's fun. It's like the band is like the uh, the leader instead of like the singer or whatever. Like the, yeah. the singer has to be subservient, kind of to the <laughs> yeah. to the yeah. Then when we recorded, like. Um, the instrumentally, we just squashed it down and his vocals sit over the top. Yeah. So, like, to a listener, it sounds like it, the lyrics, and, and, and it seems like that, that that was the most paramount thing mm. and it all, the lyrics and the concept, but it was the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's a really interesting way of working. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And so you guys haven't released anything for a little while. Has, has there been any talk of like, um, you know, doing more stuff in the future? Uh-huh. Um, I, I've got two kids, like they're four and six. Yeah. Uh, we've all got a little son, Rui. Um, we'll, um, Josh just had his second child and Flynn's got a son as well. Yeah. So it just went on the back burner. Fair enough. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, we've got together and jammed like we did last year, not this year. But we've still got about four songs that we want to record and yeah. release. Beautiful. That we have been jamming. So, yeah, there is... I don't know if it happened this year or maybe next year, where that is still the goal to um, put those together. Because I think next year would be 10 years. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Possibly. So, yeah, we're, we're going to play... The show at least for that, and then we should be able to knock out four more, just like a EP or whatever. Uh, yeah, and we'll record with Ivan again, the same guy. That, yeah, um, it's so funny. Like, um, yeah, Ivan Vicentin recorded the album. He was in a really iconic band called Ghoul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Hana, So that's how we. That's how we know. Um, right. Ivan. Yeah. So that, that's the yeah. That's the connection. There. Yeah, I was like looking him up because um like i found in my emails i recorded like a real lo-fi uh ep of piano songs when i was like 17 or something and he mastered yeah. it actually so oh, no I, I looked back and i found this little email correspondence and then i was like googling his name i was like what is he doing because he was so like talented and like this yeah. cool musician and i think it's like a lawyer or something yeah he's a lawyer now he just he dropped by the cafe he's got some work in Wollongong at the moment so yeah. he's been coming morning um just recently funnily enough that's great um, but yeah so it was good good to um I'm, I'm always like kind of in contact we're, we're always talking about food and barbecue and still so um, yeah nice <laughs> um, but yeah he's still in the game and if we record we're going to record with him again that's sick so, the old game back together but yeah we ohana our first band played with cool and like, like marcus whale oh yeah um, so yeah he was I was, we, were chat, we were chatting about Mark because he'd rock up to shows with like a little briefcase. He had like a, fu- a funny little look going on, like I don't know how long ago now that was. But yeah, that was kind of like yeah. a little Sydney circuit. Yeah. Um, it was that like yeah, Sizzle like, Lock, like um, <laughs> Marcus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember going to like, um, there was this series of like experimental shows at this gallery in Newtown, and I remember being like yeah. 16, and it was like, eight dollars and you see like four bands or whatever and it was all like weird noise music yeah good times there was a whole bunch of DIY venues like in and around like um Chippendale yeah yeah like Serial Space I think I can't remember the others yeah yeah there was Maggotville and like that was a long time ago yeah like the big um oh fuck (laughs) yeah there was one I forget what it was called but that was that was quite a space as well but yeah um that's how that's how that's the Avon connection yeah beautiful well um thanks for having a chat with me it's great to hear you know a little bit more about like some of the background um yeah yeah it's super cool that you know that maybe uh, i'm glad to hear that you guys haven't broken up as a band because yeah <laughs> you're definitely um yeah one of my favorite um aussie bands so it's really cool to hear that there might be something more coming. And, um, yeah, all the best with your family. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for the chat. No, um, yeah, it's definitely open, open-ended. open Like, um, yeah, we're, we've still got just a little bit more in the tank. We've still got a little bit more to do. So, um, <laughs> awesome. Cross it out by next year. Yeah, sweet. Cool. All no right. Take it easy. Yeah, you too. Okay. okay. Bye. See ya. Evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Music Rules. And I say evening because I am in a different part of the country. That's right. I'm coming to you live from interstate, the land of the black swan. And no, I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about the animal. And I'm talking about Western Australia. <laughs> Woohoo! WA. Woohoo! The most isolated city in the world. 
<laughs> Did you know, Fen, that at this moment you are closer to Bali than you are to Sydney? I did not know that, but I did know that if I come here in November, I will be in the only city that is holding a Coldplay concert. Oh, isn't that such a weird choice? Yeah, so stay jealous, haters. <laughs> I think like Coldplay's getting that WA tourism money. Oh, yeah. I, th- I, th- I think it was Bjork that also just did a tour only in Perth for her yeah. new album. They actually renamed... Perth while she was here they called it Perth. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Anyway, today we're talking about a band that is very near and dear to my heart. It is a band from Australia, potentially from Wollongong. Don't quote me on that, but maybe really? one of them lives in Wollongong or something, or they might just live <laughs> south of Sydney. Or maybe they all live in Sydney. I have no idea. (laughs) Let's just say they're from Wollongong. The band is called You Beauty. (laughs) And the album we're talking about today is called Jersey Flag. And it's a concept album about a past his prime NRL player who falls in love. And is there anything more special than that? No, Uh, it is incredibly special. And the lovely lady, her name is Anne-Marie. It rolls off the tongue. Um, Yeah, so this is a really cool album. It's been very influential to me in the stuff that I've written. And yeah, it's um, it's set in the mid-90s. And it kind of follows this circular narrative structure. It's sort of a hero's journey, if you will where you have a character in one situation and then his situation, he gets all crazy and then he kind of returns back to where he was, but he's changed as a person and able to uh, be more grateful for the things in his life. Hmm. Um, I know uh, the process of this album, it was written and recorded all of the instrumentals and then the band sent the instrumentals to the singer. Um, His name is Will Farrier. Um, and he wrote all the lyrics and constructed the story and like reordered the tracks and stuff like that. So all of the instrumentals were actually written before anything to do with um, the lyrics, which is really interesting because oftentimes we talk about how the music is reflecting the lyrics and blah, mm. blah, blah, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but in this case, it, the, the music uh, couldn't reflect the lyrics in some ways, right? Mm. But I'm still going to talk about how it does reflect the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or because so maybe the because the, the lyrics causation reflect is the, the yeah exactly the lyrics are reflecting the music or he'll pick a particular instrumental because it matches with the lyric that he's chosen or whatever so yep. it kind of the relationship still exists but it, I thought it was an interesting way to uh, an interesting process yeah um yeah so as such the the phrases are sort of uneven like the musical phrases across this album there sometimes uneven or unorthodox because of the way that it was recorded. It's not kind of, you know, it's not following the whims of a lead singer. It doesn't have to follow the natural structure of vocal phrasing. So that's interesting to me. Um, and it kind of has this like, you know what? I I have no idea what the word post-punk means, but I'm just going to say I can anyway. sort of tell you. This- <laughs> and, and the reason I can tell you is because... Um, Jono was the first person to explain it to me in a way that made sense. So post-punk was or is meant to be the first genre of rock that is not directly influenced by blues. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure if I fully like stand by that definition 100%, but there there are a lot of things in it which are pretty anti-blues, like... There's not often like one, four movements and a lot of the in- intervals are very neutral. Kind right. of like the Bar Italia record we talked about. Yeah. Or Spirit of the yeah. Beehive. There's sort of like, yeah, this like favoring of intervals that are a bit more ambiguous and particularly in the bass, you can hear it, I think. Yeah. Well, I would say this record kind of fits that definition. Mm. It's very minimal. There are these very like driving melodic bass lines um and often like the guitar is playing these kind of single note 
yeah. um, melodies and rhythms and things. Um, and I read that, so because of that, there's this interesting harmonic world that gets created where yeah. there's a lot of implied harmony where things aren't necessarily spelt out with a chord, but you just have kind of two notes and you're filling in the gaps. And I feel like that is a really good way for this band to work because then the singer has all this space to fill in Absolutely. those gaps with yeah. like how you want to perceive the harmony. Um, yeah, so I think we might just go straight into a song, uh, unless you, mm. maybe you can well, say I, some I general just, thoughts about the album. Well, I like, um, much like a lot of the music on this podcast, I'd never heard this before until you told me about it. And I assumed that this was a gigantic band from overseas. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at it and I was like, oh, it's like local, local music, basically. Yeah, um, very I just, local. I just had a bit of a Google of the band members and I don't think they're from the gong. There is someone who has a very similar name to Will, but it's a different Will. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I really had it in my head because it is so like well-produced. It's like really interesting songwriting. Um, I thought this was a gigantic thing, but Hey, how, how, how yeah. good that, um, like where, where did you hear about these guys? Oh, actually, yeah, it goes way back. So, I bought an album called Heavy Flow by the Absolute Boys in uh, about name. 2013. Um, <laughs> and Absolute Boys is Will Farrier's project before he did You Beauty. So, it's kind of like I've been following him for a while. I heard about Absolute Boys because they got a good review on the website Mess and Noise, if you remember that. Mm. Um, I went into Red Eye Records twice to request that they uh, to request the album or to ask if they have it, and eventually they uh, mailed it in. I think on the third time that I went there asking for it, yeah, because at that point I had never bought an album from online before. I could have just bought it online, but <laughs> actually, you know what? Going to the local record store, requesting it in, probably the better way to do it because I didn't have to pay any shipping. Um, so yeah, that's a really like a really really cool album and so i was just like enamored with that album that one's a little more like in terms of songwriting it's not this concept album it's more just like um this kind of hazy like ambient um guitar lines and these like weird dissonant textures and these cool drums and stuff it's a really cool album maybe we'll do it on a different episode but anyway i was super into that album and then i saw the you beauty you know, arrived as this new band with the same singer. Um, yeah, and then I just eventually got around to checking out this uh, Jersey flag, and I became obsessed with it. And it definitely was an influence on my song Pop Star, mm. um, in terms of like the whole story and everything. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's so cool. Like while we show each other these albums, we're also showing each other like each other in a way. Like it's this. Yeah. There's, there's so much of you embedded in this music. Um, yeah. We're giving away all our all, secrets. All our secrets, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I had a I had a little Google and this band, they have some common members and I hope I don't take a while to um to find out find out who they are, because otherwise we might just have to cut it so it goes straight to me talking about the bands. But they they come from they come from bands like um, a hybrid of Australia's underground great unsung bands such as Mere Women, Absolute Boys and Ohana. Um, okay. I do remember Ohana. Right. That was that yep. was a band that I saw once or twice, and they also had a bit of a cult thing happening. Ohana means family, and family, and family means, means no, no one gets let, left behind. No one lets gets but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean they they were a great band. Um, yeah. Yeah. I should say, you beauty. I'm not sure if they're still a band. They kind of released like two albums in the space of two years and they haven't really done that much since. I did go see them. Um, I did see them at the Peterson Bowling Club in about 2019. Um, and the lead, I was sitting like right near the front eating uh, from a bowl of chips. The lead singer was wearing sunglasses and a singlet. He came over to me. He, uh, he took one of my chips and ate it, and then he uh, did the performance. <laughs> and I was like, wow, the lead singer from You Beauty just ate one of my chips without asking? 
<laughs> what an honor. And then he played a really uh, a really great set, so and, and you know what? He, you know, he, I hope they come back. He couldn't have done it without that chip. He couldn't have. He that needed that energy. High. You know what? I was more than happy to provide. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, Will Farrier, you can steal my chip any day. Come grab another. <laughs> come grab another chip. Wait, yeah. take, take two this time. Yeah. But this time, I've learned the, uh, the tricks of the uh, Turkish ice cream salesman. <laughs> where he keeps uh, yes i've seen these stealing the cone <laughs> yeah he was like flipping it upside down every which yeah. way doing all he'll be sorts grasping of for the chip. chip getting very yeah. impatient you can try and get this chip i'm then gonna you make won't. you work for it <laughs> yeah and then we'll put it on tiktok and it'll get millions of views like all the other turkish ice cream salesman videos <laughs> well speaking of uh turkish ice cream salesman Let's get stuck into this first track, and it is titled Anne-Marie, after the love interest of the album. There's a couple of tracks that precede this that kind of set the scene of this guy who's kind of a little bit past his prime. He's talking about, like, the younger players kind of hating on him, Um, and he talks about his kind of personal history. He has a father who's an alcoholic. His parents are divorced. He talks about playing, you know, youth... uh, NRL or whatever and yeah so that's kind of at this point um, in the story he meets somebody and let's find out a little bit more about her see this song is Anne Marie most unexpected of places uh this guy has kind of been presented to us in the previous tracks as you know he's he's a bit of a buff head i guess you could say Um, he's a footy player you know he's yeah yeah and um 
yeah, this is like such a sweet and such an earnest song. Um, even though some of the details are like, you know, like a bit buff-ish, like when he says that he already popped your friend Stacy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but then other details are really beautiful. Um, I wrote that when this guy talks about love, he often talks about it in religious terms. Um, so, he talks about her being at the Winnie Cup, also known as the Winfield Cup, mm. which sets this before 1995 because they changed it after that because Winfield is a cigarette company that was sponsoring the cup. Oh, <laughs> right. And they weren't allowed to have cigarette companies sponsoring the cup after that. Yeah. So, he gets her to come to the Winfield Cup and she's watching him from the stands like an angel, he says. So, that's something that kind of happens a few times throughout the album is him using this like religious terminology to describe how he's feeling. Um, I also wrote like there's these culturally specific details that I really like in this album. So like Winnie Cup, Winfield Cup. Mm. Um, but a line like, I met you at a thing for children's TV. The club sent me because I had chuff, chuff in, in my pee. pee. Is like so... Um, it's so like specific and like you can just imagine like an NRL player like having to go to a children's TV event function because they're doing this like public show of, you know, apologizing for whatever <laughs> misdeed that they've done and like they need but, to rehabilitate yeah. their image. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, those sort of culturally specific details really kind of, I, I guess, create this world and create the narrator of, as this like believable person. And yeah, it just seems like really well researched the whole album for, for for our international listeners i i can't really specifically say what drug chuff is i guess it's like probably like weed or something but yeah it's a saying chuff in someone's pee is like basically this person had a drug test and failed and yeah they got they're done. being sent to do a children's tv program as punishment yeah as far as the music goes i wrote that it has like this hopeful sound and there's that repetitive motive. It's kind of, it's moving upwards, which gives mm. it that hopeful feeling. And it's this in this kind of pentatonic world. Um, but it's kind of, it's got this ambiguity in the motive where it works when the bass is doing like the major, you know, root note. Um, or when it's doing the relative minor root note. So the bass keeps kind of switching between those. Which is another thing I really like because this song is like this really happy like love song, but then I feel like the fact that the bass keeps going minor, it kind of mm. creates this complexity to it or is like maybe foreshadowing or like, yeah. you know, maybe this isn't all as good as it could possibly be. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And because the guitar is so sparse, it really allows the bass to play with the tonality in that way, which is really fun. Yeah. I, I know in this mix, the um, the bass and the drums are very forward. And the guitar is a little bit more pushed back. Yeah, um, definitely. Which is yeah, cool stylistically. Yeah. It's like, it, it, it all, it's kind of contrary to what you'd think, but sometimes when elements in a mix are pushed back, they kind of stand out more because you're kind of listening out for them a bit more. Because yeah, it's not as in your that's face. True, actually. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's sort of... Like the strokes have like really quiet vocals, but like you still pay attention to it yeah for example yeah right. for sure um, um there's a lot of like tonic pedal point in this and what i wrote was that like the tonic pedal point underneath the minor guitar part it's like a major tonic pedal point under a minor guitar part um it feels like really insistent like that this is like this is major key this is major key this is major key it's almost like the narrator saying like being so insistent, like, this person is the one for me. It's mm. only been a month, but I'm on my knee. Say yes, Anne-Marie. It's like this really, it's a bit, like, intense, this mm. expression of love and affection. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then there's some other just nice character details, like, you got me missing training, got the coach on me, but I'm still making tries because I know you can see. So it's like having her in his life and having her kind of looking down at him like an angel. Mm. Um, it's just almost like this guardian angel figure where he wants to be better for her because of her watching him yeah. better for her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yes, we'll see how that goes, won't we? <laughs>
<laughs> what the this very space. next song on the album is entitled Now Her Skirt. And let's just say things don't go exactly the way he might want them to. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Gods of cheating, get him back, indeed. And Lord knows he's done his share of that. Um, so, well, obviously, from a narrative perspective, he gets cheated on. How sad. Anne Marie is not the girl that she's not the girl that he thought she was. Yeah. Perhaps. Um, and not only does he get cheated on, but um, it's with a puppeteer. Yeah, I thought that was a nice detail. <laughs> for for the last two and a half minutes, I've been trying to Google who Mauricio is. Yeah, the who is this Mauricio? I, but I cannot find this person. <laughs> I was hoping it would be a real person. M- maybe it yeah, is. Yeah, same. But we I just like, can't find everything it. else in the album is like there are these <clears throat> little facts and these little details. Every name is like somebody real. Mm. I was like, Mauricio's got to be somebody. Yeah, who I'm knows? looking at, at Mauricio's like. I, I I thought maybe like, it's like it a, a place to eat. Yeah. So I typed yeah. in Mauricio's and then it came up with a place looking, in America. Yeah. And then I had to put in this There's Australia. a place in West Bend. Yeah. <laughs> I was typing Mauricio's Sydney. Yeah. Restaurant 90s, like all this stuff last <laughs> night and I couldn't find anything. <laughs> Going like full like, I, I love uh, the, like internet historian mode. Yeah. Detective, detective mode. Detective mode. I love the way he uh, does the line too uh, about the puppeteer. I went down to Mauricio's to pick her up. And then later on, he says, yes, a pup. Very good rhyme there. Yes, a pup. A tears trained to have his thing, oh, his yeah. hands up things. Um, it's what we call enjambment, where like the end of the phrase, the start of the phrase, it's kind of like offset. It doesn't start exactly where you expect it to. Mm. Um, I yes. think his melodic phrases are really interesting and in the, the length and the shape of them. They well. are. It's it's really cool. Like while I was playing this back, now that I know that uh, Will got these instrumentals and then created a narrative out of it, it's um. I, I was just imagining listening back as he would for the first time. 
yeah. and thinking about how you'd approach this because it's like it's like a kind of like a blank canvas. I mean, not really because there's music there, but in terms of like narratively what you're going to construct, it's all just mm. up to you. So Yeah, and I wonder if like does the band have in mind any sort of idea about a narrative or is mm. it like are they going to do like a happy song and then like a kind of more unsettling song or it's just whatever they yeah, feel like. Yeah, so maybe it's that casual. It's an interesting process. Maybe it's just going, oh, we've got like enough kind of happy songs as to it something a bit darker. But th there is something yeah. here that I really like and I really vibe with is like quite a few of these songs end like they're minor songs, <clears throat> but they inexplicably just end on a major chord. <laughs> and I yeah, really, I really resonate cool. with that impulse. Like... If you listen to my first ever album I put out, Pleb, there's heaps of stuff that just always will end. It's like, oh, here's the end of the song, and then just do a big major chord. Major chord. I don't really know where yeah, it comes from, so but it's just this yeah, funny impulse that musicians have. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, I wrote, like... Oh, it's also in 6-4, this song. That's kind of an interesting thing. Oh, uh, yeah. It's this very natural-sounding natural, natural sounding 6 4 mm. Um. So I read that uh, in the chorus of this one, it's funny, like it, the previous song, Anne-Marie, was like mostly major and then the chorus changed to minor. This song is mostly minor and then the chorus changes to like the major key. And the first time the chorus happens, like the guitar drops out, so it's just bass and drums and he's just singing on top of it, which once again, it creates this kind of ambiguity. And then it's also this nice effect where you can kind of, Sometimes you can create contrast and you can create a feeling of forward momentum not by adding stuff, but by taking stuff away. Mm. And that is something that I very, very rarely do in my own music and I should really try to do more because it like, it's so, makes so much sense. Like You don't need to have stacks of elements on top of each other. You don't need to keep building up the stacks and just having a, you know, whatever project file that's about to crash. <laughs> um, Sometimes it's better to take away, you know, be a little bit more minimalist so we can mm. all learn something from that. When I was recording um, the, yeah. sorry to interrupt, I just have a funny yeah. anecdote for that. When I was recording the Thomas Covenant album, um, yeah. I had like a friend who was randomly just hanging out in like the studio, which was my house. Um, and he was like sitting back on a lounge and he's just like, it got to the second chorus and he's like, here's a crazy idea. Take out all six of the guitars and just leave the acoustic and it was just like, because <laughs> me and Jono, we'd like, we'd done the thing where you double track three different guitars and had an acoustic yeah. as well, like this really like huge palette of sound and it was great. But yeah, we took it all out. We just left the acoustic and it was so impactful just going, oh, so yeah. Everyone should go listen to, um, is it called School Diary? Yeah. By Thomas Covenant? School Diary was the record. That's a, that's a great uh, concept album as well. And the song was Nickelback. Oh my god, I love that song. <laughs> um, one of the greatest, hu one of the greatest humorous songs of all time, in my opinion, <laughs> as I've told you before. Thank you, Finn. But speaking um, of Nickelback, Chad, Chad Kroger, Lineback, NRL. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Nickelback, Whispering Back, Whispering Jack. Oh, a see, line that I really like. That was a on great reference. Song. Is you could have had Whispering Jack play at your wedding day. It's another one of these lines that kind of dates it back to the mm. you know early nineties or mid nineties. Yeah, being a John Farnham um, album. John Farnham, yeah, Whispering Jack. As well as very um, Australian. The Cross? I guess it's back to Chasing Thrills and the Cross again. Chasing Thrills and the Cross. I was, you know, I was born and grew up in King's Cross. Oh uh, yeah. Back when it you know, probably right around the time that this uh yeah. album is set. It's funny that, mid -90s. that that's a dated reference now, the idea that you'd go to the cross to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> to... The lockdown laws really killed <laughs> King's Cross, like absolutely killed it. Yeah. Now, like if you're chasing thrills in the cross, you're going to Harris Farm. Mm. Oh, you're going to do axe throwing <laughs> or something. You know, one of those You're going sort to play of... golf at a bar. Yeah. One of those sort of uh, hobbies. Yeah. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Killing live music venues since... 2000 something <laughs> yep yep i mean what, what um, else yeah when do? the when the chorus returns the second time i wrote that it's the harmonization is kind of surprising because like every single chord is major basically so even the ones that could be minor so mm. like it goes from chord one to chord 
four to chord six or something. Yeah, yeah. and, and the chord six is usually minor, and they make it a major. Yeah, which is really just fun. Mm. It's just fun. I, th- I, th- and I it think feels it's another... kind of surprising, and there's these cool vocal harmonies on top of it. Yeah, it's another element that maybe sits in the post punk thing. The idea of yeah. just sort of like bashing through with like a certain chord flavor, like diatonically so instead of going down to like a relative minor just keeping everything major or yeah moving yeah. up and, and and that is pretty embedded into composing on guitar because if you learn how to do a bar chord you might just move to the next place and just hold the exact yeah, same totally. shape yeah composing on guitar is such a mystery to me mm. just the entire world of guitar is so mysterious to me <laughs> It's just like a piano, but there's no white and black keys. It's just one long thing. <laughs> what the hell? So there's no position. I mean, there is positions, but yeah, you know what I mean. I only understand piano, man. I, that's that's why I'm so excited to hear your... Uh, your Ebony and Ivory. <laughs> that's why I'm so excited I'm the, to hear your I'm song. I'm Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah, well... Every time you do yeah, songs um, from guitar bands, it's always really fun. Yeah, because I have no idea what to do. I'm just like, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I should pick more piano bands. Yeah, you should only pick depth. piano bands. Yeah. You should do just, yeah, you should do Billy Joel Piano Man. Yeah, nice little little tune about a bar. Maybe I'll so tickle anyway, the yeah. a bit. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I wore another man's clothes. Um <laughs> So, it, at this point in the narrative of the album, there are, like, three songs, I think, after this, which is just him completely crashing out. Yeah. Uh, so, his relationships failed. Everything basically goes to dirt. Um, he is getting drunk. He's having a spew in the oranges bucket. Um, he's I kind love of that detail. For training. It's so good, having yeah. a spew in the oranges bucket. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if this happens in other countries. I assume it does, but I don't know, but... Like, anytime you play sport in Australia at halftime, you eat oranges. Mm. I don't know. You eat, like, cut-up oranges. Yeah. Like, I played soccer and, like, yeah, it was always cut-up oranges. But it's funny. I thought it was just a thing for, like, kids' games. But, I like, I, I don't know. I, I don't hang out with adult sport people. <laughs> I don't know what they do. I assume they just would keep eating orange. Like, why, why yeah, would they true. stop? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's um just hey, one, another if, one of these like real specific if, if you're mysterious a, details. If, if you're a jock and you're listening to this, write into Please music write in. rules podcast at gmail.com and tell us what do you eat at halftime? You know, actually like it's funny that I'm doing this album which is about NRL because like I have absolutely no idea about NRL and all of my friends are obsessed with NRL. Really? And never in my life do I feel more isolated than when they're talking when about... my friends are talking about NRL. Yeah. Yeah, I've I don't know. I've never been into NRL either. Yeah, I, like I don't have anything just against it. I just have never. No, neither. Yeah, so, some people like, get weird about sports and music. Like they go like, "Oh, Australia doesn't support the arts," and then sport is overrated. And it's like, yeah, I guess so. But like, I, I don't want to be against sports people. Like that's chill. They can do sports yeah. and enjoy sports. I can do music. Yeah, I mean, I like sport. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I just, I don't know, I just never got into NRL. But, like, literally every Australian person is obsessed with NRL. There's a great tweet, I forget who it's by, but it's, like, it's, like, a list of hobbies for Australian men. Mm. And it's, like, sports betting is the first one. (laughs) And the second one is staring into space. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God, we do love sports betting. It sucks so bad. (laughs) There's this idea of the Australian male as, like, this kind of, yeah, I don't know, like, sports-obsessed, um, very stoic, not showing any emotions, kind of, um, but actually, like, deeply emotional inside and deeply troubled. Yeah. <laughs> Everything under the surface. Yeah. Everything Yeah, good. that's kind of Australian masculinity in a, in a nutshell. And it's like, literally, you talk to anybody and, like, about their dad and they're like, oh, yeah, he was kind of like, um, you know, a bit of a silent type. Yeah. Or, or he'd scream at me from the sidelines <laughs> while I played children's <laughs> sport and maybe, oh, you know, that maybe drank a bit much. Like that's like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of good. Like how this album can capture that. I haven't yeah. really heard much in the way of albums that talk about 
Like, I, I, there's lots of Australian movies that talk about this sort of thing. Yeah, that's true. Like, lots of film Australia things, but um, not heaps of albums I know of. I feel like they tend to go very dark in the films. It's like, it's always about, like, a serial killer or something. Yeah. In order to explore masculinity, I like that this this album, it has, you know, it has sympathy for its protagonist, even though he's kind of not the best guy. Mm. Um, and it kind of, it allows him to have some redemption. Yeah. As we will see in the following track, Rabbits, which is named after the famous NRL commentator, Ray Warren. Oh. I was in a bar, then I was out the front. People don't remember a face. Of course, when it's all bloated from the sauce, I don't blame them in the first place. And who comes pushing through the evening glow? The last person I want to see. Ray Warren jogging those big long suck in the cool air of winter Sydney. I turned and buried my face into my hood. Didn't have to try too hard to look like a worthless drunk. But it sits down and says, Yeah, beautiful guitar lines. Nice? And when they come in with that change, the do you want to feel like a real man now? I get chills. Mm, so I did too. Good. It's like a great Actually, harmonic change I, and the melody is just so nice. I got chills on the, um, you got to find a way to forgive us somehow. Yeah. I love when that change happens. Yeah. But we'll get there. It's cool. We're going to talk about the start of the oh, song Oh, of course. First. So he's in a bar and then he's out the front of the bar. Um, kind of a sad place to be. Um, and then he sees this famous NRL commentator jogging past him, which is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to look like a, you know, just like a, a drunk on the street. But Ray Warren, Ray Rabbits Warren, recognizes him and decides to give him some advice. Um... And yeah, so he says, hold the, t- hold the tears. I'm going to tell you how to get through. So this kind of goes back to this idea of this, the stoic Australian male that we're, um, we're talking about before. So it's almost like the only way this guy can be receptive to advice if it's framed in the, um, uh, through the lens of masculinity and stoicism. Mm. So in order to be a real man, like this is what you should do. Mm. And if you want to be a real man and... And, you know, you want to get through this and be like a, a good Australian bloke or whatever, then you need 
to forgive her. Mm. And I find that message is, um, it's really nice. And it, it kind of continues this almost religious theme about love through the album, where it was like, he saw her like an angel in the stands. Then the gods of cheating got him back. And then now there's like this angelic chorus of voices that comes in kind of begging him to forgive her because as we know, to forgive is divine. It's one of like the more important, forgiveness is like one of the most important things in, you know, Christianity, I Mm. guess, right? I wasn't raised religious, but... Yeah, he sort of just learned that much just by existing in Australia, almost. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, so I find it's like this really beautiful message and it kind of allows him to have this feeling of redemption hmm. thanks to Ray Rabbit's Warren. <laughs> <laughs> they put like a bit of a different EQ in a reverb when Ray Warren is talking to him. Hmm. Like, So they make that kind of distinction in the mix, yeah. which is kind of fun. Yeah, and, the, and there's um, some new harmonic kind of territory that's explored because the rest of the yeah. album it has got a lot of that kind of chunky riffing, I guess. Or like, yeah. I guess you could place it as macho and then it's this really sincere voice that calls out and says, yeah, I've got to find a way to forgive her. Yeah. It's nice. It's like the first time it really kind of, the harmony opens up a little more. You get these kind of major seventh chords. I think it's a one, four movement or something like that. One, four, six, um, towards the end, which is a little bit more functional than the harmony has been so far. Mm. Um, so it's kind of this more like less of a thorny sound, less of that like yeah, less of the chunky kind of post punk sound, and more of this like open dreaminess. Mm. Um, it's almost like Ray Warren has talked to him, and then it's like Ray Warren's words are just kind of echoing around in his head, and they mm. keep coming back to him. Yeah, like and like these they've irregular cut intervals. Yeah, they've cut through and the drunken haze. Exactly, yeah, and they're almost like these, like, sort of guardian angels on his shoulder, or these, uh, you know, otherworldly voices hmm. giving him advice. You know, yeah, she stuffed it up, but you're still all alone. You want to feel like hmm. a real man now? You got to find a way to forgive her somehow, hmm. and that's what he does. He finds a way to forgive her. The next song that we're we're not going to talk about it, but the last song on the album is called "Off the Bench," and it's basically like this. Hmm. Returning back to where he was, he gets back on the team, he's back with his girl, everything's good. And he appreciates life more now that he's returned to the start of the circle in his hero's journey kind of structure. Hmm. So, the way the hero's journey works is that you kind of have, at, at the top of the circle, you have order. At the bottom of the circle, you have kind of like chaos or like the underworld or whatever you want to call it. Disorder, I guess. Um, and oftentimes there's like the hero gets called on a journey and then, um, he goes through all these perils and this crazy stuff. And then he returns exactly back to where he was. He always returns back to his, you know, hometown, for example, or he returns exactly back to where he was, but he's changed as a result of his journey. Mm. And I love that kind of structure. It's really satisfying as a listener. Uh, it's satisfying to read stories that are written in that way, um, even though it is like this, you know, conventional structure. Hmm. I would say this doesn't, it's not like a one-to-one exact hero's journey in this album, but um, yeah, it's got that circular feeling that is really satisfying to listen to. Hmm. Yeah. Do you have any last thoughts on the album? I really love the last track off the bench. Um, yeah. It's really nice. I also, I meant to say this before, but I forgot. I love that track six and seven, which are the tracks where our protagonist is suffering the most. I love that the lyrics online are written in all caps. (laughs) It's good. (laughs) It's a good way to kind of up the ante and, um, yeah, let us know that this is like the, I don't know what, what, what act is that? Like the second act in the three act structure or the, or the hero's journey? Yeah, I would say, yeah, the second act. The complication. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely the complication. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the um Off the Bench is a very pretty song and it is very satisfying. Yeah. yeah. It's just really fun. Yeah, nice. Well, should we keep going and 
uh, we can get into the song that I wrote for this episode. Yes, I'm so excited to hear. Okay. And and th- and this Let was me... written while you're in Perth, correct? This was written. Uh, yeah, essentially, this was written on the plane to Perth. Ah. Which influenced the writing of it in a way. Who who, who were you flying with? Let's fly Jetstar. Ah. Uh, Good, so you would have had lots of free time before the plane took off as it was delayed three hours. <laughs> yeah, not, not that much. Really? <laughs> Every time I've flown Jetstar, no, it's been delayed I at was, least two hours. I was lucky. Um, I'm going to send you the lyrics. Cool. Yeah, so the writing of it like kind of influenced certain things. I was writing from the perspective of a character similar to the You Beauty album... Um, I'm not going to go too much more into it than that. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. I wake up and I put on my finest shots. They show the muscles in my thigh. Slits down the side. Creatine high. Shake down at slides. Protein for my job. It does require people to exercise and when... They don't, I get kind of upset Cause I just wonder why They waste their time and money on something they don't want to do I spend my life doing most everything I could want to do I love to live but I love dancing too I could in more tension, stay in the gym And when the night hits I'm going dancing, yes I dance until I see the sun rays I wake up early, get home late, I don't care what the neighbor says I'm living life to a degree, most people think it's not okay That's fine with me, cause I'm happy Wee! I'm going dancing, yes I dance until I see the sun rays I wake up early, get home late, I don't care what the neighbor says I'm living life to a degree, most people think it's not okay That's fine with me, cause I'm happy Day comes again, my only friend is the receptionist behind the desk. He speaks my name, more of the same. Small talk, I guess. I'm not the best at making conversation. It's a test of my patience. I'd rather be with my clients, yelling to bend your knees. There's this DJ, but I think you wouldn't know that To my surprise, he knows the name of this guy, DJ G Then he likes one song, he thinks it's fun Fun! So we go dancing, yes, we dance together all the weekend Two sweaty bodies on the dance floor and I'm glad to have a friend I mind my ball of life that goes to turn the bars into him We hear the song, we sing along like <laughs> what the hell? There we go. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't expecting that. Oh my god, that's so funny! A song that sounds exactly like you, Beauty. Oh, you know what? I, I <laughs> thought for a second I had to check the Bandcamp tag because I just kept. I thought it was just keep keeping the playing the same album. Wow, that <laughs> sentence came out really good, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> that's so fun. It's like I feel like like lyrically, I can see, uh, I can see, I can make comparisons. Um. Yeah. <laughs> it's about a different kind of Australian masculinity, yeah. which is the personal trainer guy who goes to EDM uh, clubs at night. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and this explains why he joined the Zencaster call as DJ Jathon. Yeah, DJ Jathan. Jathan. <laughs> yeah, like Jason. <laughs> but with a lisp. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I, I, I cracked up at the... The like we sing along like do 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 do. do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is kind of like if if this was within the album as like a hero's journey, I don't know if this would be at the beginning or the end. 
if this is like the protagonist yeah. changing or if it's just because it's sort of i feel like this would be towards the beginning yeah maybe this is the start of something yeah i don't know yeah it almost makes me want to write a whole uh whole album about this guy <laughs> this uh personal trainer guy <laughs> who has no friends yeah but loves to dance loves to dance <laughs> that's the best i feel like this guy side creatine high shake it down slides protein for my job yeah creatine's the best but you know it, it doesn't give you a high did you know Don't you have like more energy there or something no all it does is it just helps your muscles repair faster okay. but i can see I, well. I can see how the act of having creatine is like a high because it's like yes that means I can do more exercise. <laughs> um, yeah. It shows how much I know about working out, which is zero. Uh, no, it, I, it's, it's good. I, I think it's funny. I, th- I, I saw like a Fox News thing <laughs> once where someone wrote in and they said like, I'm worried about my son's creatine usage. It's oh, very wow. funny because they're going, creatine <laughs> is like a workout drug. Blah, blah, blah. But no, it's, yeah. it's pretty boring. But um, yeah. <laughs> This is yeah. You're right. Shut up. <laughs> Stop talking about it, then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I love like because you, you said this this would be at the beginning, but I could almost manage this. Imagine this at the end of a hero's journey because yeah, the protagonist talking about how like they contain multitudes and they like to dance and work out, and it's like <laughs> they, they seem very zen with themselves. Yeah. Um, Maybe, um, yeah, maybe at the start of the journey, they only like to work out. Mm. But yeah, it does say... And then they discover dancing. Not the best at making conversation. So yeah, maybe there's like some trouble there. But he does make a friend. And maybe that could be because of what, mm. what he learned on his journey. Who knows? That's true. We will probably never know. Yeah. <laughs> the, the instrumentation of this was really funny and kind of put it in EDM land a little bit. Yeah, I was like, basically just trying to imitate "Summer" by Calvin Harris. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, Ca- Ca- um, Calvin Harris walked so um, you beauty could run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, famously a big influence on you beauty is Calvin Harris. Yeah, um, but yeah, there there were some things melodically that I was trying to do actually. Mm. <laughs> the, the, what, what I did notice is during those verses. Like there was the um, uneven phrasings and then yeah, there was five bar phrases. Yeah. Which I actually, I forgot to talk about that, but in the song Anne Marie, it's all five bar phrases. Oh, cool. Um, or a lot of them are. Yeah. yeah. And then the way the bass moves as well is very yeah. post-punk, even though it's like kind of yeah. like a wibbly wobbly <laughs> um, Version of EDM it. bass or something. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, like, there's a similarity between the genres, which is, well, not always, but, like, oftentimes there are these, like, monophonic melodies, the single note melodies, and then these, like, single note bass lines, mm. and that's about it. Yeah. yeah. There's not that many chords necessarily in, in uh, EDM, and there's not that many chords in post-punk. So, yeah, all of it is, like, I use a lot of chords in my writing usually, but in this song I use pretty much no chords. It's all just single note melodies. Mm. Which was influenced by you, Beauty. Yeah. That chorus yeah. is so funny. That's fine with me because <laughs> I'm happy. We. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I, I'm living life to a degree most people think is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's hinting at something sus afoot or something not great afoot. I guess so. Like maybe, maybe yeah. this person's covering for something. But, yeah. This guy goes 150 percent. Yeah, all the in time. He does. Yeah, and yeah. I guess that's reflected in the music, right? Like it's really like, uh, really like hypo, um, energetic. Yeah. It's like yeah, almost like aerobics music in a way. You'd, you'd hear yeah, this at yeah, any yeah. time. Fitness. The BPM goes up in the lead up to the chorus. Oh, does it? Which you probably noticed. No, I yeah. didn't notice. That's cool. It just gets, it gets just like eight beats faster. Yeah. So it's like 120 in all the verses, and then it's just like do 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 do. That when that melody comes in, it just gets a little bit faster and a little bit faster, and then when the chorus hits, it's like a good 128, yeah. like house music uh, BPM. Yeah, nice, <laughs> cool. Well, I, I'd love to hear more about where this story goes. So, if you yeah. feel any more Perth inspiration, 
keep, keep that yeah. train rolling. Yeah, maybe I'll write a whole album <laughs> <laughs> about about this guy, and I don't know what this guy's name is, and about DJ Jathan. Mm. Maybe he gets to meet DJ Jathan. Yeah, maybe DJ Jathan is like, God, I feel so silly saying <clears throat> DJ Jathan. I think because I have a lisp a little bit. So when I say Jathan, it feels like I'm just doing it wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but maybe DJ Jathan. It was just for the rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, what's the rhyme? It's like, there's this DJ, but you may not know them. To my surprise, <laughs> he knows this guy, DJ Jathan. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, maybe DJ Jathan is like the... the maybe he's the... He's the guy that breaks it up between these two people. Like, he's a bit of a yeah, maybe. Judas character. Maybe he's a psycho, like, cult leader. Mm. Yeah. That could be cool. Anything can happen. And hey, how yeah. lucky for the listener to hear, to hear this little peek behind the creative curtain. Yeah. As to Who knows? This could be foreshadowing of, you know, an EDM concept album. Mm. I will definitely never do that. Um, <laughs> but, but maybe. Why not? It was actually so much effort actually trying to produce the chorus. <laughs> It sounds great. <laughs> like it sounds really well Thank balanced, you. and um, I think maybe the only thing missing from that genre specifically would be like auto tune or something, like overproduced yeah. vocals with like. I was trying to. My mic is like just not good enough to get like the amount of detail for the vocals. Like I need a proper condenser mic because Calvin Harris he doesn't auto tune his vocals when he sings on stuff. Oh right, but it, it's like his voice is like really kind of gritty. Yeah. Um. So. I was, what what does but Calvin just, Harris do? Like... Would I know any of his songs? I'd have to, right? I feel so close you to right you now. right now. You're right. It is really a um, gravelly fella. Yeah, he's like Scottish or something. Mm. Yeah, so I was going for that rather than auditioning. I mean, he does he does lots of songs with feature artists as well. Like yeah. the song Bounce. No? What's Bounce? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Uh, Sorry, I started listening to the song while you were talking. Uh, all yeah. of these songs oh, I learnt against my will. God. God damn. Yeah. I hated that stuff growing up. This is when I had to go to clubs because I thought that's what you did when you were 18. Yeah, that's yeah. what you did when you were 18. What one did. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all these... Yeah, but like, like, yeah, these songs no one knows because it's the continuing folk tradition. <laughs> yeah, they belong to no da, one. Da, 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 oh. <laughs> so fun to sing those like, those like really kind of like repetitive melodies. It's kind of like constructed for people in like, you know, e- every single mind state. Like you know, high yeah. on things and what whatever nasty things people do at the clubs. Yeah, oh my count God. me out. I, I don't want know. any of it. I want no part of that. I just, I just want to be at home with my creatine and my home gym. I just want to sit at home and listen to my own podcast, <laughs> and drink a cup of tea, and laugh to myself. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh my god i've actually done that before yeah same I, I, I laughed at things that you were saying in the in the uh, podcast not things that i was saying i laugh at things that i say too <laughs> no <laughs> I, I i reckon we're funny as hell i reckon we're funny as heck funny as heck sorry forgot the pg thing yeah thank you um, all right, that's. I think it's good for today. Yeah, you can follow us on Instagram. Um, yeah, keep those ratings coming on Spotify. It looks heaps good for us. And um, yeah, and maybe do a rating on Apple Podcasts because I did a rating and I thought it would have my name, so I left a review that said uh, this podcast is really relatable, but it just looks like someone random wrote that. So. Yeah. Maybe just very nice. Maybe just go and give a um oop, started playing it by accident. Maybe just go and give a, a review yourself. Maybe talk about yeah. some f- some of your favorite funny moments. <laughs> <laughs> some of your favorite um <laughs> favorite interesting things like maybe maybe learning about what post punk is or mm. maybe maybe you really yeah. loved can you give s- a re- some of the Can you please give a review? And can you please talk about some of your favorite funny moments? I'm just going to offer some some of them out and you, the listener, can pick what you like. Uh, creatine riff. 
That was really funny. <laughs> uh, the d- discourse on Australian masculinity. That was really... <laughs> that was funny. That was, uh, that funny was illuminating yeah. and funny. Um, maybe you liked the way that Fen sang we. I know I did. That was really <laughs> funny. These are just some of the things that you can talk about in your review of us on Apple Podcasts. So, yeah. I can give you a sample review um, if you like. Yes, please. I'd love that. Music Rules is a family-friendly show that manages to be both entertaining and illuminating. Mm, Very good. And what was your favorite part? (laughs) My favorite part was the part where they didn't swear Mm. except for the petulant Jonathan took Mm. in one episode that we forgot to bleep his F word. Oh, did we? (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) Wait, I thought I bleeped it. No, I did bleep it. (laughs) What? Oh, my God. I have to go replace the audio. I thought I did. That's crazy. Oh, well. This is how I find out. Um, But, yeah, thanks so much for listening. And uh, music rules. Music rules.